My name is Fred Stack. I'm Vice President of Marketing for Lieber Corporation. I'm here to talk to you about a new product we're introducing here at AFCON. It's called the Lieber DSE. The Lieber DSE is a derivative of our traditional Lieber DS. So it's got a lot of the same kind of, of reliability features built into it that you've become used to. But it is revolutionary in what it does to actually improve the efficiency of a cooling unit. If I look at just the air-cooled unit and what it has in it, it has things like digital tandem scrolls, variable capacity compressors. It's got EC fans that can be lowered below the floor to save the energy from a fan stand. It's got other technologies like electronic expansion valves. It's got uh, stage coils in the uh, unit. It also communicates directly to the outdoor condensing units, so they share information back and forth to optimize the entire system. Combined, we look at a 40% improvement in the efficiency of the system over a normal uh, situation on that worst case design day of 100% load with 95 degree ambient. But then we also have something that is a new feature that is an econophase. It's an economizer built into the circuit, but instead of using your traditional glycol system that has the extra um, econo coil in it and has the extra uh, glycol pumping loop to actually provide that uh, cooling into the system, both of which consume energy uh, as they go forward, we use the exact same circuit, the exact same refrigerant, the exact same coils. We just turn the compressor off and turn on a pump. This is a technology that we developed and introduced to the market back in 2003. We called it our Liebert XD system. We've now advanced what we, we can do and how we manage that to actually use this pump refrigerant approach as an econo phase. If you think about the compressor I'm turning off, the pump I turn on is 1 25th the horsepower of that pump. This system is more efficient than any economizer on the market today. That includes air economizers. So, uh, let, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. There's been a lot of adoption of air economizers, particularly by some larger users, very much uh, you know, seeing that as a way to dramatically cut their uh, energy usage. So, what's going on in the air economizers that, that uh, how does uh, the, the econo phase differ from that? Give us a, a little comparison between the two approaches. Sure. Um, an air economizer um, is a good system. Uh, like with any system, there are pros and cons. It does open up the entire data center to the outside air. So if you're concerned about humidity levels, you're not going to use an air economizer. If you're concerned about uh, gaseous pollution or any other kind of, of pollution, you're probably not going to use an air side economizer. Um, it is an efficient way of bringing outside air into cool space. You need an exhaust fan and you need an intake fan to pull the air across various filters. In the case that we're talking about here today is all those concerns that you might have about the reliability of a air economizer do not exist with this system. It is a self-contained closed system to actually provide the cooling to the data center. So it's much more reliable in that uh, sense. But again, it's much more efficient. The horsepower of the exhaust fan is many, many times more than the horsepower of this pump, refrigerant pump, that we've added to the circuit to move the refrigerant when we're in that econophase mode of operation. And we don't, um, so, so as I look at an air economizer and look at the efficiencies of an air, air economizer where it comes into the equation, you'll find that we save more operating costs with our system than you do with an air economizer without the risks of air economizers. What we're doing here is showing some comparison to traditional DX systems, showing that at, at that design day you're 40% more efficient, but as I move down to a, a lower ambient temperature outside, say 55 degrees, I'm 80% more efficient. If I go to part load, it's 115% more efficient. So it gives you an idea that I can really start taking advantage of the cooler air, not necessarily in the winter, but just at nighttime, because it does cool off at night as we go forward. Up here, I'm comparing myself against when I'm in the econophase mode to where if I'm at full load, it's four and a half times more efficient than I am when I'm not in full load. When, when I'm in uh, uh, non-economizer mode, 
And if I'm at 50% load, it's over 1,000% more efficient. Now, for our readers who may not, you know, understand this, maybe talk a little bit, uh, tell us about what the differences are between the, the different load factors here and why the, uh, the, the numbers are, are different for partial load and full load. Okay, um, well, it, partial load, various things uh, happen in the system. If I can unload like I do with the digital scroll, the evaporator coil actually warms up, so I don't end up dehumidifying the space when I don't want to. So I don't have to turn a humidifier back on. So I've got energy efficiency built into the system because I don't operate it in a fashion that you may not want to because it, it actually does unload. Uh, the, um, I'm trying to think what other things are. The fact that the indoor unit and the outdoor unit communicate back and forth together, what it does is it tells the outdoor unit, even though it may be cool enough that on a traditional system it may slow those fans down to save energy outside, I'd rather save energy inside. The entire horsepower of the outside package might be three and a half horsepower, where the indoor package is like 40 horsepower. So I'm much better off slowing down the indoor and keeping the outdoor operating. Um, so again, operating and controlling the thing as a system rather than individual pieces is the most efficient way to go about it. Are there any particular kinds of customers that, that this system might be attractive to? I think any customer um, that's putting in a, a data center that's anywhere from um, say a half a megawatt up to maybe three, three and a half megawatt will be very interested in this size of uh, cooling system. It does come in just one size today. It is a, a 125 um, kW is, is the cooling of this system. So if, if I were looking at a very large data center, say at 10 megawatts, some of these large ones that you might see out there, I mean, they go up to 60 megawatts, you could be putting in a lot of individual single right. pieces, and therefore installation costs would get to be more expensive. Um, so in the very, very large data centers, you're probably not going to see the demand for this. But if you're looking for... Um, again, a what I would call a large data center, three and a half megawatts in size. It's a very economical way of, of going about it, and it's a very reliable way to go about it. Again, you can you can build up, only put in the number of units you need today, versus having to put that whole chiller plant in and all the piping in to handle what your you know five year or ten year projected need happens to be. Just put in what you need today and then add more as your, your load changes. And uh, when is the, the DSE and uh, Kano phase uh, systems, uh, when are they going to be available? Um, we've got uh, two systems uh, operating today. We've got another customer we're shipping next week. Uh, so we are actually beginning the process of shipping today. We call this our pre-production or pre-introduction uh, phase because we always work with individual customers one-on-one -on -one with the first, let's say, 20 or 30 systems that we actually supply. Um, our expectation is we will be in full production to anyone that wants to buy a unit uh, in the uh, April, May time frame of next year. And that's just, we want a, a nice runtime on the units that we're actually supplying right now into the marketplace before we just open it up to everybody. Okay, Fred, listen, thanks so much for walking us through the, the new product. Thanks, Fred. Excellent. Thank you.